I took a big breath and I went down and I opened my eyes in my, in my mask in the darkness uh, with my flashlight and I saw like right in front of me this huge eyeball. Whoa, this is so weird. Oh my that. God, they're so strange. Such a strange, strange animal. Well, the yep. ocean is so bizarre in, in and of itself. There's just so many weird creatures so in the many. ocean. It's such an alien environment to us as, as terrestrial mammals. In one of his latest videos, Joe Rogan might have just exposed the real reason why NASA stopped searching the oceans. And let me assure you, it's not what you think. Think of a secretive exploration beneath the surface of our oceans. As we delve into this mystery, prepare to witness the unforeseen revelations that lie hidden in the oceans. Have you ever found yourself lost in the vast sea of NASA search results, wondering why they shifted from exploring the oceans to now launching between planets? It's a question that sparked many curious minds, and the answer might not be what you initially thought. We'll explore this and much more in this video, so get ready. Earth is a fascinating celestial body, holding a very rich history. But amidst all its wonders, the oceans stand out. Why, you ask? Well, it's because most of our oceans remain untouched, still waiting to be explored. Picture this, over 80% of Earth's oceans are still a puzzle, hidden beneath impossibly deep waters, facing immense pressure and deprived of sunlight. So why did even NASA, with all its brilliance, pause its exploration of the oceans? Well, some even speculate that NASA's initial purpose was to explore these underwater depths. However, the truth, as you'll soon discover, takes a different path. Before we dive deeper into the mysteries of the oceans, let's lay down some groundwork with this mind-boggling fact. Our oceans stretch over 70% of the Earth's surface, which is more than 360 million square kilometers. Yet, more than 80% of this watery expanse remains unexplored. Astonishingly, we're often said to know more about Mars and the Moon than the ocean floor right here on our own planet. This NASA scientist will tell you how little we know about our oceans. All these fundamental things, there's a lot that we don't know. And there are some big numbers that still blow my mind every time I hear them, that the ocean is 95-ish percent unexplored, and the ocean is 80% not mapped. It is only 20% mapped at modern resolution. Let's rewind to the first years of ocean exploration. The journey beneath the waves began in earnest in the 19th century. The Challenger Expedition, 1872 to 1876, marked a significant milestone, becoming the first true oceanographic expedition. Armed with basic equipment, such as trawls and sounding lines, scientists explored the depths, measuring temperature, salinity, and collecting marine life samples. Now, when we talk about depth, consider this. The average depth of the world's oceans is around 12,080 feet, 3,682 meters. Early explorers could only scratch the surface, but as technology advanced, so did our ability to reach greater depths. Modern submersibles and remotely operated vehicles allow us to explore the abyssal plains and trenches, reaching depths of over 36,000 feet, 10,972 meters. In a groundbreaking collaboration, NASA joined forces with the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution to unlock the secrets of the Huddle Zone trenches. These trenches are mostly situated in the Pacific Ocean's Ring of Fire, where tectonic plates collide, carving deep gouges into the seabed. The Marina Trench, the deepest of them all, plunges nearly seven miles below sea level, reaching the heart of the Huddle Zone, named after Hades, the Greek god of the underworld. For a long time, marine biologists thought that life in the Hadal Zone, the deepest part of the ocean, was impossible. But as deep-sea submersibles began venturing into the region in the first half of the 20th century, it became apparent life could survive there. The perception of the deep ocean took a turn in 1977, when a US research team dared to descend into the unknown. A remotely operated vehicle armed with cameras was sent 8,000 feet, 2,440 meters deep into the Pacific Ocean. Its mission, to capture images of hydrothermal vents, where the heat from volcanic activity seeped through the ocean floor. 
To the scientists' amazement, the images unveiled a mesmerizing world. There were vibrant ecosystems thriving around the vents, bustling with marine life unseen by human eyes, translucent snailfish and amphipods, tiny flea-like crustaceans that were never witnessed before. Look at this. Squid skin. Squid skin. Yeah, this so fuck. squid or chip? Oh my god! That's crazy looking. It's like a television. Yeah. Like, like the, the pixels on a television. I didn't know squid could do that too. Mm -hmm. Whoa! This is so weird. Look oh at my that. god! They're so strange. Such a strange, strange animal. One of the scientists, Shang, said, "This discovery introduced us to a whole new way of living on Earth." These creatures, thriving without sunlight, sustain themselves with the chemicals emerging from the seafloor. The scientists faced a mysterious question. How could life endure the crushing pressure of the Hadal Zone, where the pressure reaches a shocking 15,000 pounds per square inch? Don't worry, because we have the answer. Scientists have unraveled the mystery. Organisms in the Hadal Zone, including giant amphipod crustaceans and snailfish, possess special enzymes called piezolites. These enzymes, named after the Greek piezin for pressure, prevent their cellular membranes and proteins from being crushed under extreme pressure. Joe Rogan, a famous comedian, MMA commentator, and the voice behind one of the world's most captivating podcasts, is also fascinated by the wild potential lurking in the uncharted depths of the ocean. In his own words, the ocean is a big, beautiful monster, and even NASA share his intrigue. But their focus goes even deeper, probing conditions that mimic those found on distant planets. Whoa, this is so weird. Oh my god. Joe, in one of his podcasts, talked about the blue-ringed octopus, one of the ocean's most dangerous creatures. Its bite can be fatal to humans, yet it's not an aggressive hunter. During the day, these tiny octopuses, no bigger than a golf ball, conceal themselves in cracks and under rocks, quietly navigating their oceanic domain. Blue-ringed octopus ejects tetrodoxin, a harmful toxin that could paralyze and kill a human adult in mere minutes. It's 1,200 times more toxic than cyanide. cyanide. It's crazy. That's wild. Mm -hmm. What makes them truly intriguing is not just their toxicity, but how they obtain it. Blue-ringed octopuses don't produce their venom. Instead, they enlist the help of bacteria found in the ocean. These microscopic allies, stored in their salivary glands, produce a potent toxin, tetrodotoxin, TTX. In the quest for knowledge, it's not just comedians like Joe Rogan who find the ocean's mysteries fascinating. NASA, too, directs its gaze towards the depths, seeking conditions that reflect the alien environments of distant planets. Recently, scientists caught glimpses of never-before-seen creatures lurking in the depths off the coast of Western Australia. Armed with specially designed cameras, these scientists embarked on an expedition more than three miles deep into the ocean, uncovering a treasure trove of unseen creatures. These courageous researchers dove into an area of underwater volcanoes, reaching two spots named Christmas Island and Cocos Islands. Their specially designed cameras, capable of withstanding immense pressures, delved more than three miles down, passing through a layer between 600 and 3,000 feet known as the Twilight Zone. What they found is nothing short of extraordinary. Hundreds of previously unidentified species. Among them was a blind eel with gelatinous loose skin, still unnamed and resembling something out of a toddler's runny nose. This strange creature defies traditional reproduction by giving birth to live young, adding to the parade of new species discovered in both the deep ocean and the twilight zone. But the surprises don't end there. The tripod fish, a creature that astounded scientists with its tripod-like posture. Hermaphroditic and unique, meaning having both male and female parts, these fish can reproduce with any other tripod fish, showcasing an evolutionary marvel that would make even Charles Robert Darwin raise an eyebrow.
And if that wasn't enough, there's what may be the longest animal in the world, a siphonophore, a stringy jellyfish found more than 2,000 feet down in an underwater canyon off the coast of Western Australia. These discoveries highlight the incredible biodiversity hidden beneath the ocean's surface. Australia's waters are proving to be just as captivating and mysterious as its landmass. From creepy fang-toothed creatures to ghoulish bioluminescent wonders, each year unveils more secrets. And here's the kicker. A staggering 80% of Earth's oceans are yet to be explored. But hold on to your seats, folks, because the latest discovery in the world of sea monsters, as featured on the BBC, is about to send shivers down your spine. Imagine stumbling upon the remarkably well-preserved skull of a gigantic pleosaur, a prehistoric sea monster, right on a beach in Dorset, southern England. And let me tell you, this one's a real game-changer. This unearthed fossil, a solid 150 million years old, rewinds us to a time when pleosaurs ruled the oceans alongside the dinosaurs on land. What's truly mind-boggling is that it's nearly 3 million years younger than any other pleosaur find, potentially hinting at a species never before identified by science. Now, let's talk about the size of this sea monster. The skull alone is longer than most humans are tall, giving you a spine-chilling sense of the creature's overall enormity. But here's where it gets truly hair-raising. Those 130 long, razor-sharp teeth are capable of a single lethal bite. And if you dare to take an even closer look, the back of each tooth is marked with fine ridges, designed for one gruesome purpose piercing flesh and swiftly extracting its dagger-like fangs for a rapid second attack. The pleosaur was the ultimate killing machine, a 10 to 12 meter giant with four powerful flipper-like limbs, moving at high speed through the ocean depths. To put its bite force into perspective, compare it to a Tyrannosaurus rex. 35,000 newtons for the pleosaur compared to the T-Rex's 45,000 newtons. It truly was the apex predator of its time. So, now you know that these dreadful creatures might be the reason even NASA, with all its brilliance, paused exploration of the oceans. Knowing this creature existed, there is no doubt Megalodon was around too. However, this video is a testament to why exploration never truly stops, and NASA, with renewed vigor, is diving back into the oceanic mystery. Stay tuned for more revelations and join us in exploring the mysteries of our vast and undiscovered oceans. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Until next time.